Hello, and thanks for joining me again in Lincoln Center's pop-up classroom. I hope that you've been watching all of these programs, and if you have, then you probably did some step dancing with Yvonne yesterday. Um, we are showing these programs every weekday um, at the same time at two o'clock in the afternoon, and it really is in dance, theater, music, and in the visual arts, and today's lesson is in the visual arts. We're going to be making collages of springtime flowers. And I want to just make sure that, first of all, welcome to all you kids and your grown-ups. And I'd also like to um, welcome teachers and other artists who happen to be following us on Facebook. So thank you so much for joining us. I'd like the grown-ups to stick around because whether your, your child is going to need some support from you or not, um, you're going to be able to make a project right alongside with them. So to collage our flowers today, you're going to need some simple activities, um, materials, excuse me. You're going to need a shopping bag, some scissors, white paper, and I hope a glue stick. I hope you have one. You might have brought one home in your backpack. So here's my shopping bag. It's just regular from the grocery store. I've got a piece of white paper that I'm going to be working on. These are my scissors and a glue stick. So gather those supplies up and we're going to get started right away. Now, saying that we are going to be collaging springtime flowers, you might want to have some color besides your brown paper bag. And I've got a couple of different types of paper that I'd like to just bring your attention to. And if you see those in your house, you might want to gather those as well. They're not mandatory, they're optional. Um, I have some construction paper scraps that I've saved. I have some graph paper, which I have left over from another lesson. I even have a big um, yellow-ish envelope that came in the mail. I have a, a big stack of these things just to increase my choices of what it is that I wanna do. And remember that art making is all about making choices. Um, I did one other thing, which was I found a little uh, container of crayons that I had at home. They were been sitting on my desk, and I thought, oh, I could take my brown, brown bag and just start coloring in and making areas of color. So if I didn't have any colored construction paper at home, I could just make my own by drawing on a bag. So... Those are some of the choices that you have just in terms of the setting up of your materials. And we're gonna get started right away. Now, if you've been working with me before, you know that I love a brown paper bag. It's something that we all have in our homes. So we've been working with brown paper bags for at least in two lessons with me before. And you know that what we do is we cut up in the bottom of the bag, we cut up a, slot, a side, and then we cut off the handles. And you end up having something like this. Whoops. A big piece like this. I like to cut mine in half because I always like to think that if I were here with a young child or with my grown-up companion or a friend, I could share what I have of my brown paper bag with them. So half is for our today's project and half is to either use later or to share with someone. Okay, so I don't know what your favorite springtime flowers are, but there are many that I have. And I'm feeling a particular urge to make springtime flowers because I've missed all of spring this year, which is a tragedy for me because I love seeing all those different colored shapes and trees that flowered, all those things that come up in places where I'd, I'd forgotten there ever were even plants there in the city that I live in. So I always look forward to that. And so I've missed it this year. So I thought, well, let's make some indoors here like we have on the wall behind me. So um, I'm wondering what are your favorite springtime flowers? And if you have some, you could just send a little message in the comments and I would know what your favorite springtime flowers happen to be. So I'm just gonna put this down here. Um, 
sometimes crocuses are the first springtime flowers to come up. They come up very early and little snowdrops as well. But right about now, I think you might be seeing some other flowers in the markets or in the grounds nearby. And they might be things like daffodils. They might be flowers like tulips. Coming soon will be things like peonies and then irises. There are so many different types of flowers. And I'm wondering which flowers you happen to know. Do you know any flowers? Because if you do, you could just put them in the comment section. Oh, and my friend Laurel says sunflowers. Yes, I love sunflowers. And we're going to be looking at some today together. So I'm going to ask Jesse if you wouldn't pull up the first image of tulips so we could all refresh our memories about what tulips look like. Thank you so much. So here are some tulips, a beautiful photograph of tulips. And you're going to remember also that in earlier pop-up versions with me, we've been talking a lot about shapes of different sorts, both geometric shapes and irregular shapes. And when we're looking at these tulips, I'm seeing something that's kind of like a circle, which is the flower of the, of the tulip. And I'm seeing something very, very long and thin, which is the stem of the tulip. I might even think of it as a long rectangular strip. And then I'm seeing leaves that start right at the base of the tulip and then go right up to the tip top. And they are pointed at the end. They're kind of like a big triangle shape. And so those are the three main shapes that I see in a tulip. And I'm going to get right down to it and start cutting them out. I'm going to cut out my first tulip shape and I'm just going to cut that whole it's kind of like a bowl or like a cup a cup like shape and it's kind of curvy on top I'm looking at a big pink one that's sort of right in the center of my screen it looks kind of like this and I'm going to now think about cutting out a long stem that would go with this. I think I'll use this end of my bag. You can see that it does look rather like a long, thin rectangle. This is a bit long for my piece of paper, so I'm going to just snip it. And let's take a look at what that would be like. So here I have a tulip, and now I'm going to tear out, I think, what might be like a long triangle. Woo! <laughs> That's a big one. Let's see, I want to cut it down the other side. Tulips are really interesting because every stalk of the flower, um, the stem with the flower on top, has its own leaf. And I learned that by looking at this picture. So it's something like this. And I think if I want to give it a little bit of motion as if the, we the breeze is blowing, I might make it look something like this, a le little leaning to the side as if the wind is coming in and kind of pushing the flower over. I think that's, I'm going to, I'm going to start with that. So let me just tell you that you can follow along and make a tulip, but you can make any kind of flower that you like. You do not have to be making tulips. I just brought up some pictures with the help of Jesse because I wanted you to be reminded of the way plant, different plants look. So I'm going to call this my first tulip flower. And um, you might notice here on the wall that I have some flowers in like a garden. They're in a growing situation and they are positioned right down at the bottom of my page. And then I have some, I'm, I'm imagining some cut flowers in a vase. That's another way to make your spring flowers. It's totally up to you. And you might have other ways. You might even want to have someone holding flowers. I don't know. But we're thinking about the important part is spring flowers and bringing some springtime into our lives right now. So um, I'm going to leave these shapes right here. And I am going to, hello there. Oh, my goodness. Someone, I think, is writing to me in Russian. I'm delighted that you've come from so far away to join this pop-up classroom. Um, 
Let's see uh, another flower image, Jesse. What do you have for us? I think some irises might be next. And I'm going to get some purple paper together because I remember that these were purple. Now, remember that you can always change the outside shape. What is the contour of the flower? Um, you can cut and make it nice and smooth. You can even cut and make it irregular like the top of my tulip. Um, and you can tear shapes as well. And so we're going to use a combination of those two techniques. We've used them together before. And I'd like to just keep that in our repertory of how we work with collage. Um, and now I'm going to try to cut, I mean, tear out something that looks like the petals of an iris. Now, an iris comes up a little bit later than now, like next month, they'll be up. And an iris has some sort of floppiness to it. And because it's a kind of floppy flower, you know what I mean by floppy, it's just kind of like, it has some like parts that kind of dangle and are loose. Um, and because of that, I thought tearing would be the perfect contour of my shape for that idea. So I'm tearing out some petals. And there are petals that are on the side of each iris and a petal that goes up the, looks kind of up the back and droops over. And then a big one that's right in front. So I think that this might be my petal that's in front. And of course, I'm looking at what I call my inspirational material. But again, I'm just, I'm paying some attention to it, but I'm not, I'm not going to adhere to everything that I might notice. I'm having fun with my materials and I'm just experimenting as I go. So here's another petal. And now I'm going to make a petal in the back. Yes, if you don't have colored paper, remember that you can color it in later. So it looks kind of like that. And I know from my own experiences of flowers outside that irises are usually taller than tulips. So that's just something from my flower memory. And so I'm going to let it be a little bit taller on my page mostly because I'm also getting ready for sunflowers, which are the tallest of my flowers today. So I guess I'm going to need a stem. And take a look at this picture because you're going to notice that there are some flowers that are closed and they are in their bud form and some flowers that have totally opened. You can see the buds that they're kind of cool looking. In fact, I think I'm going to make an iris bud by cutting. It's a smoother shape, that's why I'm gonna cut. And it's kind of shaped like a, I don't know, like a big almond or something, or an eye even. It's kind of shaped like this. And um, I also think, oh my gosh, let me show you what I might do. I might even take my crayon, though I need to have a purple one right now and just show that the very tip of the iris is poking out, the very tip. So I can see that it's gonna be a purple iris, but everything else looks kind of brownish, just like my paper. So I've just colored the tip of this and that's gonna be a bud coming soon though. So now I'm gonna just pull out some of my saved construction paper. I think that this piece might be big enough if I go on the diagonal. And I'm going to cut one of those very tall, again, triangular leaves. So I'm going to add that to my picture. I'm not sure where exactly. You notice that even though I have a glue stick at the ready, I'm not gluing anything yet because I am the kind of person who likes to take a look at what I've got going on in my picture and make changes. I make changes all the time. And that's really important to me as an artist, that I don't fix the idea too soon when I start to make something. So let's move this leaf. Now, you might remember from an earlier lesson that we did together 
that sometimes I like to overlap my shapes, which means putting one on top of another. Um, and sometimes I like to just make my shapes touch. So I'm going to make the leaf just touch. Let's see, how am I going to do that? I want to cut it like this. I want to just touch my stem of my iris. And I'm going to let it swing right out to the side. Why not? Now, I'm just checking my picture to see if you could have one stem of an iris with two flowers, because this is suggesting another flower is coming. I'm not so sure you can. So, I mean, I'm not so sure that's the way it happens in the world of flowers. So I'm going to just cut another stem for it. And maybe I will even put it a little bit closer to my tulip. And now that's going to overlap. Okay, so I'm getting my ideas together here. And I'm keeping them in flux, meaning that I'm not gluing anything down right yet, because I might make some changes. All right. I'm kind of liking what I'm doing so far. Yeah, I want that to swing out so it's just touching and not overlapping. There. Okay. So, Jesse, could we see our third flower form, the sunflowers? Which I hope will really please Laurel because she told me in a comment that she really likes them. Oh, yeah. These are big and gorgeous sunflowers. Sunflowers, it's a little bit of a stretch because I was saying springtime flowers. But sunflowers happen much later in the summer, um, in the end of July and also into August. That's when sunflowers mature and they open up in this glorious burst of yellow and gold sometimes and with these very dark centers. Um, you know that the dark centers are full, full, full of little seeds. That's where sunflower seeds come from, the sunflower plant. Now, I have, mm, let's see. I have two colors here that are kind of like the sunflower. This is probably more right for the picture that I'm looking at. But look at how nice my big legal um, envelope that was recycled would look also. Look, this is just the right color too, isn't it? Something like this, right? So I've got some choices in terms of what colors I want to use. Just move this all over the place. I'm gonna have to glue this down soon, right? So you know what I'm thinking. You can see what I'm making. All right. So I'm going to go about cutting out a sunflower. And right now I'm thinking about the outside contour. Look at the outside contour of this plant. The flower is like a zigzag, a zigzag edge, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, all the way around the circumference, the outside of a circle shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cut out something with lots of little zigzags on the edge, and then I'm going to put like a circle right in the middle out of a dark color. So that's how I'm going to do this. But you know what? You could also make each individual little shape of the triangles, uh, that kind of surround that circular shape. You could do it with many little shapes, or you could do it with one big shape. That's totally up to you. But just for the purpose of demonstrating, I'm going to do it all in one shape. So I'm going to just keep turning my paper. I'm not going to be fussy. And by that, I mean I'm not going to be too exact in what I'm doing. I'm going to just let my paper turn and my scissors flow, going back and forth. Um, you might want to notice, um, I'm sorry, Jesse, I'd like to see those sunflowers one more time if I could, because I was thinking about looking at the leaves while I'm working. And one of the things about the leaves, thank you, one of the things about the leaves is that they are sort of heart-shaped. And I love uh, Valentine's Day, especially, as many of you know that about me. Oh, look, small, medium, large. So I'm going thinking about the sizes of my flowers. And my sunflower could go there. And I'm going to make a dark center. Let's see if I've got some dark color that I've colored. Hmm. Now, I don't. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a center out of my brown paper. And then after the program is over, I'm going to just color it in. 
So when you see me next time and you see my picture on the wall, it will have a dark black center or a dark brown center, kind of like the sunflower in the picture. All right, I'm going right onto my stem and my heart-shaped flowers, um, leaves. Okay, so I've got some nice dark green that I colored in. Now, a sunflower's stalk is so heavy. It's, I would call it a stalk, not even a stem. It's very, very thick, and it's kind of fuzzy at the edges. Um, gee, I wonder if I could make that by tearing. It's like it's a fuzzy, irregular contour. The contour is the outside edge of a shape. So every shape has a contour. This is a very sharp contour, that shape. This is a fuzzy contour. This is a smooth contour, my tula. So every shape, you could describe its contour. Now, I said it's thicker. So I'm just gonna look at my other shapes here and I'm gonna tear it. Ooh, what's this one? So it's thick. It's kind of hard to control when you're tearing shapes. And I like that about tearing because it makes an irregularity that you might not expect. Now, I can either overlap this So it's on top of the iris leaf, but I think I want the sunflower to look like it's way in the back of my garden. So I'm going to put my sunflower on top. I mean, my sunflower on top of the stem, my stalk stem behind the leaf of the iris. Here's my little bud. Oh, I see some comments coming in. What do we have here? Margo's watching. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and you know that if there's someone that you think would really enjoy collaging springtime flowers or just need something uplifting to do, like bringing flowers into the home, I hope you'll tag them in the comments. Get them involved. Send them a share on your Facebook. Let other teachers know other grown-ups. Okay. Now you can go on with this project, and I hope that you will, to color things in, to glue things down, to, um, and maybe I'll show you one little thing about gluing things down, because you're going to want to protect your work surface. I want to protect this good old table of ours. So I'm going to glue down, guess what first? I'm going to glue down this very irregular, poking up into space, leaf that belongs to my tulip. So I have a piece of scrap paper. It's got some notes on it. And I'm just going to glue this leaf right down there so I don't have to worry about it poking up in this space anymore. And the reason I use this scrap paper is because I want to protect my surface underneath. So you can use a piece of paper that is also recycled. That's fine. It doesn't need to be clean in any way. You can also use newspaper or the other part of your brown paper bag. That would work too. So I'm just quickly gluing down. Oh, remember I wanted this to lean a little bit. There we go. My tulip flower stem and leaf okay but you know that after this program is done i'm going to get my iris in position and my iris bud in position and glue it down and my sunflower oh i have to make a sunflower leaf before i end because they're heart shaped and i love hearts okay i bet some of you do too right isn't a heart one of your favorite shapes? Now, I'm going to make it a little bit wonky, like this. And I think I have to make some kind of adjustment to my stalk, because coming out from my stalk 
is a leaf, and I know it's got to be attached somehow. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do that. Hmm. Or something like that. So the gluing takes a few more minutes, and it's not really much much of much interest to watch someone do a whole bunch of gluing of a collage. But once you've got all your shapes in position, I want you to glue it all down. And you might want to bring out your crayons again and think about coloring in some of the things that you've already positioned into place. Uh, what I really want to do, though, is talk a little bit about what I have here, which is a picture that has two different kinds of contours of shapes. It has fuzzy shapes, like these, and it has smooth shapes, like this art shape leaf I just cut out, and like the edge of the sunflowers. Those are very, very smooth um, cut lines. I also have tall things, and I have short things. I have open flowers and closed flowers. I have, hmm, what else could I say about that? A lot of opposites is what I'm trying to think of. These are opposite things. I have shapes that are geometric, like my triangle-shaped leaves. I have totally irregular shapes. This is also a kind of geometric shape. My iris bud is like kind of um, elliptical shape, like an almond or like a circle. I put some of them so they're overlapping, which we know is one way to play shapes. Shapes that are touching but not exactly overlapping, we call that tangent. That's this right here, this leaf against this stem. And then I also I don't have any shapes that are really isolated, but if I were to take away this stalk, look my sunflower is now looking like the sun above not even like a sunflower it's funny how that happened and then that would be isolated up in the air like that but i am making a sunflower so i'm putting that back so you have lots of choices to make and you can continue working on these flowers at the end of this program but i would like to introduce you to an artist whose work i very very much admire and this is an artist called Vincent van Gogh, and I'm gonna show you two paintings of flowers that he's made. But I want you to know he painted shoes, he painted his bedroom, he painted um, gardens outside, he painted cut flowers in a vase. And I'd like to just introduce you to two of his flower paintings, which I think you would enjoy seeing. They're at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. You could pull up the first one now, Jesse, of the irises. So, Vincent van Gogh is known mostly for his incredible use of color. But because I was collaging flowers, I immediately thought of his unusual sense of shape and the way that he works with contours. Now, we saw some irises in a garden in an earlier photograph. Take a look at the lovely irregular shapes of his irises. Some of them, you can see each petal, like way over on the right side of the picture. I'm seeing each petal of an iris. It's kind of almost in the background. I'm seeing the shapes, the clean contours of buds. I'm seeing the long triangular shapes that are his leaves, long, thin, sort of and pointed at the end. And I'm seeing, oh, that there's this lovely, a kind of grouping of all of these things. And when you have a bunch of flowers and in their, they're in a vase, you can't distinguish between which flower belongs with which stem, which belongs with which leaf. They all get kind of grouped together in a very different way than seeing them in a garden. And I very much love the way that he has shown us all these different contours in his picture. Um, I'm noticing that there's a lot of overlapping here flowers in front of stems, I'm imagining. And beautiful changes of colors. He's using many, many blues and also a range of greens. 
Let's take a look at what he's done with sunflowers. So this is another painting at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And these are sunflowers that have been cut at the very end of summer, I would say, probably at the end of August, because these are just the heads of the sunflowers, meaning the flower itself. They've been cut, you can see the very heavy stalks that they grow on very clearly in this um, painting that Vincent van Gogh made. And you can also see the way the petals are facing a variety of directions. This contour of these sunflowers is very irregular, I would say. Um, and a lot of the shapes are kind of not as clearly defined um, as we might see in our cut paper sunflower. But there's a beautiful um, uh, sense of motion and movement in the way that the little leaves and the edges of the flowers have kind of dried out because it's the end of summer. So in the center of these flowers would be all those seeds. And he's given us a kind of, um, I don't know what to say, it's sort of a kind of sparkly center to the sunflower. And we fill it in with the information that we bring to our looking um, that we know about sunflowers. So these are two, I think, very important works that you might want to check out the next time you get to go to the Metropolitan Museum. You can study these by looking at the Metropolitan Museum's website and really get a close, careful look. You can blow up certain areas and see what he's done there. But he really thought about the contours of these flowers. Um, so I want to let you know that tomorrow you're going to be working with Mr. B in his classroom. And um, there are a couple of things that you need to bring. You need to have a hat to prepare for it, a scarf, and either one of these two things, a blanket or a towel. And that makes me think that he's going to be doing something with costumes and the characters that are suggested. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you'll join him tomorrow. And that I hope you'll be back here every day for Lincoln Center's pop-up classroom. I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. So long. <laughs>